looks like this. Well, what I'm looking from from my opponent's point in time is uh, the boxing and the kicking uh, combinations. I've got to smother them. Uh, I can't give them any space. And uh, basically, I've got to, uh, when I'm in on tight to them, I've got to launch them. I've got to look for the injury right there once I get them down on the mat. Uh, submission holds, choke holds. All right, you heard from Dan Severin. And what do you see in this match is Kakihara comes toward the ring. Kakihara, the younger Japanese fighter, he's about 22 years old, about 200, 205 pounds, six feet tall, an all-around martial artist. This guy's especially noted for his fast hands and for his kicking ability. He's got blinding speed. This guy is like the Muhammad Ali of shoe wrestling in his hands. And he has made his way into the ring. And now we await Dan Severin. What is the strength of Dan Severin? Dan is one of the strongest guys I've ever seen. First of all, he knows every kind of amateur wrestling, you know, Greco Roman law, that he's won many kinds of championships. But he also knows his submission wrestling because he's the United States heavyweight champion of Sambo. Now, Sambo is a Russian Mongolian form of pure submission wrestling, one of the toughest pure styles around. He also knows his jiu jitsu. Uh, and this guy has the kind of strength you would believe. I've seen him grab guys by the, the neck and the leg and put on so much power that he actually threatened to break their spines. This guy is one powerful guy. He carries a lot of weight advantage, carries a lot of uh, uh, experience to the ring. Uh, Kakihara's gonna have to do a lot to overcome this guy. I don't know, it's just, I wouldn't want to be in Kakihara's position right now. Does he have that killer instinct? And is he known for his one-on-one -on -one competition? Absolutely, Dan has put away a lot of guys up in this ring. I mean, when he sets people, when he takes people down, they fly. And believe me, it's not the flying that hurts, it's, it's the landing. Does he get involved in tag team as well? I've seen him in tag teams, I've seen him in single matches. This guy's an all-around veteran. And he certainly looks like he's uh, committed tonight. Masahito Kakiara, and you can see a uh, finely cut body. Yeah, he's in good shape, this young boy. He can go forever. Dan Severin, 36 years of age, six foot two, 270 pounds, so a big, big weight disadvantage for Kakihara. Actually, I should say a disparity, because as we've stressed all along, it's not necessarily a disadvantage. No, I mean, if the guy can take you down, if you know, at, Standing up, I would say, actually, the smaller man might have the advantage because he can use the speed and the kicking and the hitting. Down on the ground, the weight tends to mean a little bit more. So as you've seen earlier tonight, the big man tries to get the little man down because he doesn't want that little guy flying around getting, you know, and snapping him at him all the time. That's what Kakihara is going to have to do. He's going to have to keep away from the big man and just try to throw some kicks and punches at him. And as you mentioned on cue, Kakihara starts off with a kick. And Dan smothers it because he doesn't want to be on the receiving end of those things. Believe me, these guys' kick uh, is powerful. You get hit with a few of them and it hurts, no matter where it hits, whether it hurts, even if you block them perfectly, you hurt your arms. You'd rather just not get hit by them. Oh, and then just picks him up and shows that tremendous strength, one arms him right down, but didn't mean anything. But there you go, you see Dan trying to tie him up. What move is he trying here? He's trying to get a full Nelson suplex on him. He's going for, he, if he can lock the hands behind the neck, but uh, Kakihara knew what was coming. He was trying to lock the hands behind his neck and take him over. Boy, that's a killing move, that full Nelson suplex. Now Kakihara loses a point there for yes, grabbing he the escapes. ropes. That's right. He escapes on the ropes. And he's trying to throw the kick. I notice that I've seen this guy always use his hands, but he doesn't seem to want to come inside. I think he's a little bit of, well, he's, he's worried about Dan's strength. Doesn't want to get that close, so he's using a leg, which he can hit from further out with. <laughs> Whoa! Dan tries to pick him and throw him up, but Kakihara defended that by grabbing his leg. Otherwise, he would have gone for a ride up to the second floor and down, but he saved himself by grabbing uh, Dan's leg there. You know, it's amazing because we talk about all the strength and the moves, but one mental lapse, and you can be put in a position where you have no recourse but to submit. Well, that's the thing of a submission hold. You see these two guys on the ground. They're not really trying to rest. They're looking for that one little lapse in attention, that one little advantage to grab something and pull it out so that it can break. And then you've seen how fast the fights end. 
But believe me, I, 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 I've had a little experience with this stuff. You get hit, you get kicked, it hurts. But when you're down on the ground and a guy's got your leg or your arm and you feel that tendon and those muscles and the bones starting to give, and you're worried that, hey, this, this thing could be ripped out of my body, it's scary. Believe me, submission wrestling is a scary form of wrestling. You're hoping that guy will let go and you give up and you worry that it, what if he doesn't? What if he goes that extra couple of seconds? It could be too much. What move is Severin trying here? He's trying that short arm bar. So he's trying to get the leg around the body and pull the one arm out. Because as soon as your arm is out, uh, it, it's a very weak point. But Kakihara defends that, so he'll go and try for another hold. Right now they're in a... Well, he's trying to get that full Nelson on him. But Kakihara breaks away from that. Now, the full Nelson, I guess m most people know the full Nelsons, when you grab a guy from, from uh, the back and you put your hands on his neck. Now, the way a lot of people do it in, in professional wrestling that you see uh, most of the time is they put the hands on the back of the neck. That doesn't mean much. When you put the hands on the top of the head and bring it down, that hurts. Now, they add something else called a suplex to it. They get you in a full Nelson that really hurts. They get your neck extended so your chin is against your body. Then they bridge, take you over, and slam you on your head. I'm scared of that. Whenever I see that coming, I'm afraid that, you know, somebody could have his neck broken or die or something. I, I, I just cringe every time I see that move coming. Severin trying to get out of this hole that Kakiara has had him. Kakiara's had the best of this advantage. He spent all the time on top. They are not able to get him off him. He does now. We saw some chances there for a, a face lock. Well, you must stress again, there's no biting. No, you can't bite, you can't eye gouge, you can't hit to the groin. Pretty much everything else goes. I see there he's got, he's pulling the arm one way and with his leg he's pulling the right leg in the other way. He's trying to, like, like turkey day, he's trying to just make a wish and pull this guy apart. <laughs> but these guys are flexible, they have enormous flexibility. Kakihara is near the rope but he doesn't use it to escape. No, but he's safe. He feels in case he gets caught, he could go to the rope. So he's in a pretty safe position right now. Dan wants him in the middle of the ring where he can, uh, Get those two legs apart again and make a wish. There comes that kick again. There's Dan standing. Now, Dan, Dan shouldn't be just standing there taking those kicks. He should be moving in. He oh. dropped them. Four in a row to the leg. As we saw with Bad News Allen, same wow. thing is happening, and Kakihara just keeps laying in those kicks. They hurt. Oh, and a knee right there to the soul play. Now some punches, as you can see, you can close fist punch to the body, but Dan gets out of it and pulls him over, but uh, didn't get that much power on it. Dan was a little bit stunned from all those kicks and punches he took. How do you defend, how do you defend against those kicks if you're severing? Stay on top of them as if you were tied. Don't step back, and when you get kicked one, move inside. Don't stay out there and keep taking them. That's the mistake he made in that last uh, exchange. But Dan's a smart guy. I don't think he'll let that happen again. He's trying to twist his arm around and get him into some kind of a hammer lock. Kakihara's checked where he is. He's, he's pretty close to the ropes. He can get away in case Dan gets a hold on him. Dan, see, he has this tremendous strength. He tries to grab an arm and a leg and bend. He has enormous power. He just wasn't able to get it on that time. I didn't mention earlier, Dan's been in the Olympics as well. So, I mean, this guy knows his fighting. He's, he's an all-around fighter. Just needs a little work on the martial arts aspect of it. There he goes. He's got the uh, arm and the, and, the, uh, and the neck. He's got Kakihara in a bad position. He can get it. Oh, he makes it. Well, he escapes to the ropes. Or else Lo that one would have ended. Loses a point, but keeps fighting. Dan's got to get him in the middle of the ring. If he had him in the middle of the ring right then, it would have been over. Is there any name for that move, that hold? Uh, Anything specific? No, no, I don't know. I think he just tried to... Well, it, actually, he did have a choke hold on, on the neck, but he gets one in the knee. Now, Kakihara, again, showing that ability to pump those legs into him. Yeah, Dan had the uh, uh, Kakihara's leg trapped, and then he tried to go for a choke hold on the front. So not only was he putting pressure as a choke hold, he was also putting pressure on the back of the body. That's, he knows that stuff because he's a sambo wrestler.
Nakihara tries to get holds of his own, but uh, he is ob Dan is so obviously much more powerful than him with the upper part of his body. It's another thing you tend to notice between the uh, Japanese and the American wrestlers. Uh, the American fighters tend to be stronger on top from the waist up. Uh, the Japanese tend to be stronger with their legs from the waist down. And very often that happens. Dan's going to try to pick him up and suplex him right now. But he's got a problem. Uh, Kakihara can hook his legs behind. See, right there. He's got... And he's... Oh. Then he got the pressure on the knee and on the ankle, and Dan had to escape. Dan was trying to pick him over and do a suplex. But Kakihara had his legs way underneath him so that the gravity was off, and he couldn't pick him up, and he got himself in trouble with that hole. Uh, Dan Severin's right knee there was twisted a little bit. You saw him grabbing it. Kakihara has been able to counter any moves. Dan's been able to pull. Oh, nice wow. shot there. He caught that kick perfectly with a nice forearm smash to the head. He's got a good Boston Crab move on here. And now he's going to try to grab that neck again. He's got the arm. Uh, Kakihara knew what was coming, didn't even get him a chance. So that's another lost point for Kakihara. Dan's strength and size starting. Oh, did oh. he catch a shot to the head? Seven. That is a knockdown. He has a count of 10 to get up. And I think he hit him right in the eye, too, so that he's having trouble seeing. Yeah, he's blinking with that one eye. Well, you hit with the open hand, and you get the sweat in addition to the hit in the eye. And now he's getting those kicks in again. Dan ought to charge inside. And stuff. Well, there he goes. There he is. It's your basic tackle. Yeah, it's the only way you can stop it once those kicks are going. Actually, the way you're supposed to stop the kicks, you're supposed to pick up your leg and block his kick with your own shin. But again, most of the pure wrestlers aren't trained in that style. So they have to go in and take the guy off his feet. If you've seen a kickboxing match, you've probably seen when a low kick is thrown, a guy blocks that by picking his leg up and catching it on his, on his shin. An ill-fated suplex. Easier said than done. Suplex requires timing, skill, speed, and strength. And it's not all that easy to do when the other guy's trying to take your head off. What a kick to the leg. Yeah, one, two, three, four, right? Oh. Now that hit him in the back of the leg. That, that had to catch the side of him. We just saw Bad News Allen in that same position as Dan's in now. The leg just goes dead, huh? Your leg just goes dead, like when a kid used to knee you in dead leg in school. But Dan's walking around. He's, he's in good shape. Now he's backing away a little bit. He doesn't want to get caught in the legs again. He went to that southpaw stance just to protect the other leg. Right. Yeah. That was a good strategy. He's got a fresh leg to get in. Ten minutes have gone by. This is one of the longer fights. Oh, Whoa, what a move. What a move to grab Dan's ankle, and but that's the ankle that uh, the leg had gotten kicked. That's got to be a vulnerable point. Dan's in trouble. Dan's in trouble. He's trying to swat him off, but he's right in the middle of the ring. He can't get to the side. He, tries to, oh, he goes back on uh, Kakihara's ankle now. He's going Can he the get ropes. to the rope? No. He, he can't. You saw Kakihara pull him out. He was going for the ropes. He pulled him back in, and he, hey, he had the pressure on that ankle. He could have snapped that ankle, and uh, Dan knew enough to uh, pull it before that ankle got snapped. Kakihara, winner by submission, an ankle lock. It looked like Severin earlier had a chance to end this, but it goes the other way. I, 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 I'm surprised at this match. I, I really thought Dan's size, strength, and experience would do it, but he got in trouble with the kicks that we're seeing right here. Look at those things come in. Bang! Oh. Boy, that's going to take a, a trip to the chiropractor or two. My strategy was basically working for me. You know, he was looking for his kicks in the beginning. As he tried to kick, I kept fading back, waiting for the, the, the stroke to go by. Then I tried to attack him because I knew he'd be at his weakest point, you know, with his leg extended. I attacked on him. I thought, well, 
I can get them down on map just a little bit. Wear on them a little bit there. Work some some freestyle Greco techniques. Put them in a little pain. I don't know why I was being called for choke. This is the first time I mean I've been able to go for a choke before. Referee stopped me on, on several different occasions. I had to choke going. I'm like, can I understand? Because before, as far as I know, it is, it's 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 okay to go for the choke. So I had him a couple times there. Referee broke me off that. Uh, came back up, but where I, you know, I, I kind of failed a couple times there. I got in a little bit too quickly. I, I took some pretty good punishment the one time I shot in, and uh, I took quite a few shots with the knee, some shots into the face, and at that one point he t uh, he palmed me at one time in the eye, and I just I had no no vision. I had to go down, take account because I'm afraid if I stayed on my feet with his uh, quick feet and you know I mean powerful kicks, I'm afraid he would have knocked me out. So I had to go down and take a take a.